when I'm a kid, kind of new in the business, my agency is representing Domino's Pizza. Uh, I'm at the national awards and I'm sitting at the head table, which was, you know, in the presence of greatness, Tom Monahan's at the table. He owns the Detroit Tigers. He's the guy who started Domino's Pizza. Uh, this is the head table for, I don't know, 5,000 people were there. I, I don't know how many were there, but I'm sitting next to Joe Theismann. This was right after the Redskins had won the Super Bowl, uh, now the Commanders. Um, and the waiter is coming around and he takes the tongs and he puts the bread on the little bread plate. And he takes the tongs and he puts a pat of butter next to the bread. And Theismann turns around to the waiter and, and says, can I get another pat of butter? And the waiter says, no. And Theismann does a little bit of a double take and he turns around and says, you know who I am? And the waiter says, no. He said, I'm Joe Theismann. I'm the quarterback of the Washington Redskins. We just won the Super Bowl. I'm the reason everybody's here today. And the waiter, without skipping a beat, says to him, do you know who I am? And Theismann says, no. He said, I'm the guy in charge of the butter, and that's all you're getting. <laughs> it was a great lesson in being humble. And today, I am an insurance dude. Insurance dudes are on a mission to escape being handcuffed by our agencies. How? By uncovering the secrets to creating a predictable, consistent, and profitable agency sales machine. I am Craig Pretzinger. I am Jason Feldman. We are agents. We are insurance agents. Boom! Boom. <laughs> that is so funny. Wow, I love that he kept with that. That, that uh, took some uh, uh, that, that particular day. Um, and, you know, it, it, when I was younger, and, you know, I've been around fame and fortune my entire career. I, you know, I'm a little bit starstruck, and I'm a kid. That was a big honor for me to be at that table. It, it was uh, when he started his speech that, that particular day, he told the story of literally what had just happened at the table, which everybody thought was hilarious. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh, That's so he awesome. flipped around and worked in the uh, what had just happened. Yes. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Thinking on his feet. I, you know, I saw Joe. Um, he spoke. He was a keynote at an insurance thing that I went to in uh, New York. I don't know, probably eight years ago. But he was really good. He, oh, yeah. He, he did this thing about like everything changes in one instant and he snaps his finger. It was really good. I'm yep. sure you, if you know him, then you've probably seen that speech before. I, no, I don't. I, uh, you know, I, I don't know him. I just know he beats or did when he played my giants on a regular basis. <laughs> That's about <laughs> it besides that meal. <laughs> well, so for, so Eric, for folks who, who don't know you um, and haven't heard of, of you, what, tell us about a little bit about yourself, a little background and how I you got heard of me. Are you kidding? I mean, you know, there's only a couple. But I'm Eric Yaverbaum. Nobody's ever heard of me, and you can't spell my last name. Um, yeah, I've been, uh, a, a PR agency for 42 years in New York City. Sold my first one. Uh, went to work for Wall Street, who bought me. Didn't really like Wall Street. It wasn't my thing. Um, left. I worked on the transition team between uh, Bush and Obama administrations, and then I started. Oh, wow. I started the agency that I run now. I also write books. I've written seven. I'm a New York Times bestselling author. And cool. Eh, awesome. I wear so, a lot of hats. So, so uh, and I'm assuming a book just released. What's it? Talk about. Uh, yeah, I, have, I, I do have a new book coming out. Okay. Uh, my biggest book was Leadership Secrets of the World's Most Successful CEOs. Uh, that book sold over a million copies. That's awesome. Congratulations. Uh, thank you so much. Super. Our, awesome. our first will drop in January. Ah. So I can appreciate how much effort and time that took to do seven uh, of them. Geez, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm never going to stop. There is not. I I, and I, all of my clients, I insist, I tell them all, you must write a book. It's the best calling card you'll ever have. The amount of attention that you get for it. You know, I've been in, in, in the news for 40 years. I believe one of the biggest reasons that I've been, I mean, I've done some interesting stuff, but the, the press in general is always interested in, in authors. Hmm, right. And there's a pretty high barrier to entry for that because it's a lot of work. Oh, yeah, it's a lot of work. I mean, yeah. I, I, it, when I was younger, uh, you know, I ran a very traditional PR agency. When I sold it, we were ranked the fifth uh, best agency in the country to work for. And I was also writing books when I wrote books while running a traditional PR agency, it was, you know, it was a 24 hour a day sort of thing. I mm -hmm. my day job and then right. write my book all night. Yeah. It's a lot of work. So, wow. so being ranked as one of the top 
places to work and obviously being somewhat of an expert in in this whole notion of of, of employees and, and movement of employees and doing different um, strategies to bring people on in this crazy world that we live in now. Yeah. Wh- what kind of things did you do to to create this environment that that you would be ranked as one of the best places to work? Well, you know, that was before. This is now. But uh, if, if I could get ranked again, it would be higher. Yeah. The, I mean, seriously, yeah. the uh, I, for all that I've done, I get credit for a lot of stuff. I mean, uh, newspapers and magazines write about me. I'm on podcasts, television, radio shows m- my whole career. It was never me ever, even though I get all the credit and it's always my name. It's everybody that works with me and trying to uh, create an environment that works for all of us so that we can actually enjoy what we do for a living. Because it's always been important to me. I mean, I learned that as a kid. I've been doing it for four decades. And, you know, fast forward to today, you know, it's a different workplace. There is, uh, contrary to what, you know, investment banks would like you to believe, or, you know, even the Fortune 500, the notion of the Monday to Friday, nine to five work week is it's it's over. It's we're, we're never going to we're, we're not doing that anymore. Right. So you know, while everybody's trying to figure out. So what are we going to do? Um, you know, some companies are doing, you know, hybrid. Some companies are operating completely virtual. And some people some companies are saying, no, you have to come back to work or you'll lose your job. The companies that are saying you'll have to come back to work or you'll lose your job, people are saying, "Okay, I'll I'll, I'll pass on my job. And that's just literally what's happening. So, you know, what do you do as an employer to make an environment that works for everybody? Because this entire new workforce and, you know, my in in my career, you know, I managed kids in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s when they're becoming adults, 60s, (laughs) you know, the new generation. Uh, they're not, uh, they don't want to commute to work every day. They don't want to have to get, you know, dressed for work every day. They, and they did find that during the pandemic, depending on what industry you were in, they could actually do their jobs. They could do it well. They could do it virtually and get as much, if not more done. Uh, And, you know, knowing that, they're not going to want to come back. And uh, to me, that's understandable. and, And again, it does depend on what industry you're in. Yeah. Super interesting conversation. We we had a very similar one recently, and it's it's funny because it's like not to the fault of anyone, right? Yeah, and that was one of the the topics. Was like it's it's not to the fault of anyone that 20, 2020 happened. It's not to like you know businesses did not decide, hey, we we can only work from home for a long time, and then you know, employees didn't even really decide that. Then they were stuck in those situations, and now you know, being back into a situation where, Hey, we're coming back into the office. A lot of people got used to that. You can't just take that away from somebody, even though the business didn't decide that it, it is what happened there. And there can't be a finger pointing here. It just is what it is. And how do we move on or create? Yeah. It's a, um, you know, I think it's kind of an undercover, an undercovered issue in particular in, in New York city where we have, you know, 40, 45 percent vacancy rates in, you know, with with commercial real estate. The reason that we have that is because people aren't going back to work. My agency, you know, we had the, I would say, esteem honor of working uh, with one Vanderbilt, which is a a brand new building, you know, in the city that was, you know, you finished construction during the pandemic. It's a hundred beautiful floors of of corporate America uh, considered it. The most it's the most expensive commercial real estate in Manhattan. It's the the address is prestigious. The building is beautiful. And I would just go floor to floor to floor to floor and see what what's corporate America building. This is during the pandemic. And they were all they were building space, you know, office space like I'd never seen before. The, the vast majority of it uh, uh, was clearly planning for a hybrid you know, workforce to come in some days, not come in some days. Mm. What what kind of things were you seeing when you said they were building things that hadn't been seen before? Well, it's just you know the yeah. I mean, look, I grew up in a world where I you know I have a I have an office with a door and right you know, a, a conference room and well uh, everything in my office stays in my office when I leave, uh, <laughs> and and it's all there the next day. Offices that they're not being built that way anymore. 
Right. Bean bags and There's, basketball hoops. Um, well, I, I had bean bags and basketball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, had, I. Had that. I mean, I, 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 I did start a company so I could wear sneakers to work. Literally, right. I, that, that is not an exaggeration. That is literal. But you know, the the thing about it was, you know, it, it, in our particular case, you know, I'm, I'm running, you know, a public relations agency. Uh, uh, it's national. We had offices in the West Coast and on the East Coast. We did close both offices, and we've been virtual ever since. The interesting thing about that and the transition, I mean, the pandem- you know, pandemic was crazy. None of us ever seen anything like this in our lives in so many different ways, including professionally and, you know, working. And as an employer, uh, we had to make, you know, some pretty quick decisions because we got some weighty overhead that can't even be used. What do, what do you do with it? In our particular case, uh, and, and and by the way, this is not, you know, not a unique story, but you know, growing up as an employer in New York, we always had some, we called summer Fridays. Summer Fridays were basically finish your, if your work's all done, you can leave, you know, in the middle of the day on Friday and go wherever you're going for the weekend. Uh, if your work's done, and, you know, cell phones came around, laptops came around, uh, technology, the proliferation of technology. And, you know, we sort of morphed a little bit into, and were, my, you know, my current agency, and, and we've been doing this for almost 20 years. You had to come in. You had to come in the office three days a week. This is long before anybody was, you know, talking about do you come back to work, do you not come back to work. So we were set up to be to do this, to do this virtually, uh, and it worked. Not, I mean, it, for my particular agency, uh, you know, we grew, and we dropped a ton of rent, you know, from two big office spaces on the east and west coast. But then you get to the issue of, like, OK, so productivity, how is it mm-hmm. everybody do that? Because everybody's, you know, it's it, you got to be very disciplined if you're going to if you're going to work from home. Yeah, that's one issue. And some people are um, very, you know, driven. They oh. like it a lot. They get a lot done. Uh, I could see productivity go way up. But what I could also see, um, which has always concerned me, um, you know, isolation. And, you know, the whole notion of nobody's we're not hanging out at the, you know, the the water cooler you can't just drop in the office. So, you know, you can't just stop by my office. You can't have a 10 minute conversation with me that might be, you know, construed as me being a mentor, which I actually believe mentors are very important. So mm-hmm. how do you make up for that? Um, and most importantly, is you know, uh, people's mental well-being and, and, that, and that project that I mentioned you at one Vanderbilt. Um, that was being, they finished construction of that building in the first year of the pandemic. Uh, we helped uh, uh, to open a, a project called Summit, which everybody, Google it. Anybody come to New York, check out Summit. It's cool. Um, so we, so th- we, we were there every day. So we did get out and we do a lot of events. So we do get out. I think if everybody who worked for me was at home 100% of the time, it wouldn't be great for their mental well-being. I think it. I think it is important to get out. I think it is important to socialize a little bit, and I think it is important to be around other people. But it doesn't mean that you have to go back to the you know the old days in the traditional you know workspace, which there's not. And I represent a lot of developers in Manhattan. Nobody will love that I said that because everybody we we want to bring people back. I mean, cities get hurt. I mean, my city definitely gets hurt when you have forty percent less people commuting in every day to buy their coffee, to maybe shop before they go home at night, have lunch, go to a restaurant. All that's 40% down because we got, you know, less people in the city and, you know, we got a lot of vacant uh, office space. Is the traffic better? <laughs> uh, there's nobody, n- 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 nobody in the history of New York ever said traffic was better. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what are some of the antidotes to, to, to that? Well, I, I do think, you know, uh, I look I, to me, what we have, um, which is unique, uh, this is going to be different for every single solitary company. I think what we got is magical. I mean, my people love it. They are more efficient. The business has grown. The clients get more done for them. Everybody's happy. But you can't do that, you know, in, in every industry. It, there is an issue of attract it. You want to attract the best and the brightest, the best and the brightest. A lot of them are like, yeah, I'm not coming into an office five days a week. 
So if you want to appeal to them, you better have some flexibility built into your workplace. And some people do. I think that more people, uh, you know, I have no intention ever of opening offices again. Uh, it, it works this way for us. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I, I think the vast majority will have some sort of hybrid, you know, come in a couple of days a week, two, three days a week. So that there is a touch base. But I go into these, you know, big offices you know, the, it, you know, in the old days, everybody had their fancy offices, all the senior executives. And it's not like that anymore. You're, you're sharing a desk because you're not, you know, you pack up your laptop, you go home. You right. know, pictures of your family or, you know, what, or whatever it is. Offices look different uh, yeah. than they used to look. Well, it used to store all your stuff, too. And now all your stuff's on that laptop. It doesn't matter. Right. Like all you, you oh, move yeah. to a different. It's pretty interesting how like that's. You know, there was no computer at one point and you probably could do the same thing. Then there was a computer, but you're kind of anchored. Now it's. Well, computers, I mean, well, I mean, uh, we were, you know, for for as long as I've been in business, I've always been, you know, we're we're Mac based except for accounting. And uh, as you should be. Yeah. And and, and, (laughs) and, that's a no brainer. (laughs) everybody has laptops now. And I, I yeah. even remember like, you know, September 11th, which was for me, that was our view. Um, oh, we, we watched, we watched it all, but okay. I remember while that was all going on, you know, trying to figure out, okay, damn, what, what do I do? I'm responsible for everybody here. And I got terrorist attack going on down the street. What do I do with my people? And I, one, but I mean, we came up with you know our own little system so we could make sure that we were taking care of everybody and everybody could get home. But I remember thinking one by one as people would walk out of the office, is it really callous of me to say take your laptop with you? <laughs> and I didn't, I because I did feel that way. I mean, you know, right? You know, it was the end of the world that day. Bring the, bring the deck, hurry! You got to finish. <laughs> But, they, you know, in, in, in Manhattan, they closed the southern part of the city for a long yeah. time. Uh, my agency is two blocks north of where they closed. Wow. So we got to go back in. I mean, after give or take a week, if, if, we were, if we had been south of Canal Street, everything in my entire company, I would not have been able to get to. Nobody would have been able to get their computers. And we would have been out. Wow. Wow. So, you know, I and mean, how many hundreds or thousands of companies did that, imp- you know, that that did happen to? It's wild. Yeah. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. When when the pandemic hit, um, you know, I'm in California. So definitely different situation. Uh, but when it when it was the day to go home, that's what we did. But we, it was a totally different situation than than yours. Um, well, gosh, New no, York was, you know, uh, 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 we did have, I mean, on the day that we said, don't come in or how, I don't even remember how that exactly worked. Everybody didn't have their laptops. We needed to get the laptops to everybody because I knew that, uh, I, I didn't know for how long, but I had a pretty good, you know, idea that it might yeah. be a while. <laughs> um, so we had to make, you know, we had to figure out ways to get that meant somebody had to go in, somebody had, and, and, you know, nobody wanted to see anybody. Everybody was, you know, camping out in their own space. But uh, so, you know, uh, it, it, it didn't come without a, its challenges. And, and, you know, we had a lot of people sick, including me, but we made it work. And, yeah. you know, I, what, what I always say, you know, about that time, but it, it wouldn't matter what the time is that, you know, it, it, if ever there was a time to uh, figure out how to make it work, that was a good time to figure it out and make it work if you wanted to get paid. Yeah. Yeah. I remember we, we, as soon as they told us that we literally, I told my whole staff, it was like 15 of us were all going home and I said, take your laptop or take your computers and we'll just work from home. I, and to your point, yeah, they said two weeks, but it was like, <laughs> you know, they're not shutting down football stadiums. And then two weeks later go, you know what? Right. It's cool. We can go back. It so, was a money pit two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I had a pretty good idea that that was going to last for a while. And yeah. No idea it would last as long as it did. Right. I have any idea how, you know, how many people would be down in my office, you know, getting COVID when everybody was yeah. 
we were all pretty freaked out in the beginning. I mean, I, I and I had a bad case of COVID oh, right wow. in the beginning when nobody knew, you know, was that, you know. Yeah. Did, when they were building, when they started putting the structures up around all the like cashiers with wood and bolts and plexiglass, I'm like, oh, this is, this is not a temporary deal. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I mean, look, we made it, it through. I, you know, I don't want to curse all of our luck, but in retrospect, we got through it. I mean, yeah. in the beginning, you know, that when they were asking everybody to stay at home, I was saying like, I can, I could stay at home in, in, in my nice place, sitting on my couch. I mean, I'm not going, I'm not, I'm not going to combat in a war. I'm just right. staying home. Right. Right. I still have air conditioning. I still got a refrigerator. Still got a right. bed to sleep on. Well, yeah. It it seemed to me to be not such a uh, not such an awful thing, you know, to be doing. Right. It, it, all questions in everybody's mind about. So how are we going to make this work now? We didn't really have them because we had been doing, you know, we, we've been using technology for so many years to be able to work remotely. To us, it wasn't such a big deal. Yeah. And it's a good, it's a good thing to look back because, I mean, going forward, that's not going to be the only time that something's going to happen. So, I mean, I think going forward in the future, especially with AI and everything else that's coming into play, it's like, how do we get better how do we move fast like we did during that time and and equip our teams with the tools to be able to handle any situation yeah you also have a lot of companies that, that you know that were born you know in a pandemic and so they were born a lot did like a, you know i was born in the you know in a traditional nine to five or you know in my case more like 7 a.m to you know midnight mm -hmm. uh environment yeah. But, uh, you know, that not the, the, the whole notion of that's not how companies were born. I mean, it, it, if you're if you're running a company or started a company um, and you're under five years old, you were born in a different era. So, you know, it's it, 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 it you know, it's like the generation, you know, we, we, we were joking about technology before we you know went on air here. Uh, a whole generation that was born digital. I, I wasn't born digital. I need, I need all the kids around to help me figure out how to do, use all the technology. But as long as we use all the technology, you know, don't, then, then we can work this way. And it, it, it is appealing. You know, it's one way you attract people, definitely. And it's also can, can be, you know, kind of a buzzkill to somebody who wants to go and work somewhere and they say, well, you, you got to come in every day. Yeah.